All right, so today's trash day. And uh, it happens to be trash day. And we have this pile of sticks, this pile of branches that we cut, cut off from our grapevine pruning. What should we do, kids? Should we take our, what most people would call trash, and should we throw it in the trash? No. No, no definitely not. So what, we, what are we going to do with all these? That's what I'm going to show you. We're going to turn these into either, we're going to turn these into new grapevine plants, or we're going to compost them. We're going to put these in the compost pile where they can break down and we're keeping our nutrients on our site. And that's, that's one of the things we want to teach you is you don't throw away your cuttings. When you clip your branches from your trees, your bushes, even stuff out front that, you're, you have, that you've landscaped. Take those and keep those and keep your nutrients on your site. So what, we're going to show you what we're going to do next. So now we're back in the garden and I've dragged my pile of sticks here from the side of the house, side slash front of the house, back here into the garden. And I'm going to show you what you can do with these sticks. So um, right off the top of my head, I, I uh, can think of three options. The first one is propagate them, which is grow another grapevine out of these. I'm going to show you how to do that. The second would be to compost them or make sure that they don't get thrown in the trash and they get placed in your compost pile so that you save those nutrients. We'll take a look at the compost pile and see what uh, years of clippings have turned into dirt and earthworms and all kinds of habitat for for the uh, flora and fauna to live in and create rich soil nutrient dense soil that in turn makes nutrient dense plants okay so let's go ahead and talk about propagation first oh there was a third thing I just remembered the third thing would be other you could take these and make a wicker basket a weave them or make uh, something else out of them, something else, other, um, which leaves that loophole wide open for you to do something else and be creative with them. Reduce, recycle, reuse. That would be the reuse. So you can reuse them for something else. But let's talk about propagation for now. So here you have your uh, cutting, taking it off the plant. You don't want to wait too long. You don't want to let it dry out. You see back here I have a pile of sticks of stuff that I've discarded and it's breaking down. I have another main uh, breakdown pile. I wouldn't call it technically a compost pile because it's not three foot by three foot minimum and all of that. But it is in a place where it's doing magic and uh, it's breaking down and it's feeding the soil. It is getting composted. It's not a quote unquote compost pile. So um, let's go ahead and uh, talk about this propagation. So you have to first know the way the branch was growing out, which direction it was going. Now, now that it's cut, that can be a little difficult, but if you look at the nodes and which way they are pointing, that will give you an indication of which side you should stick in the ground. So one thing you can do when you pull your branches off, let me find one that's very obvious. So this one here, I mean this could have been this way, or this could have been this way. How do I know? Well I can tell by the nodes, but I'm trying to show you that are for the first time how to figure that out. Here's the tip. When you cut it off of the, the vine, when you're doing your pruning, Take the side that is the leader side, or away from the ground, away from the main branch. Take that and make that end flat. The side that is going to go in the ground, take that, go down at least two. I like to go three nodes. And, and so that was a straight cut. On this one, I'm going to make an angled cut. And there's two reasons for that. It shows you which side goes in the ground, and it goes in the ground a little easier. So, 
you want to put this once you've cut it you want to put it in the ground into soil your planting medium quickly so as soon as you cut it I'm gonna recut it because what you're doing is you're opening up it's almost like cutting your limb off what's the first thing that's gonna happen your body's gonna start to try and repair it reconnect we need to fix this immediately I like to think of it as um, it's taking its first grasp of air as though something dramatic has happened to it. It's going, <gasps> and, and it's going to suck in something. You don't want it to just suck in dry air and dry out, and all those cells in that, that point are then going to die pretty easily. So I'm going to cut it again, and I'm going to immediately shove it right into this moist dirt. So I cut to three nodes, I buried the first one, and the second one is right at ground level. You can see it just barely there, so the second one is submersed. What I've noticed is a lot of times that first one doesn't seem to go, but you'll get, a, you'll get your growth off of the second one. Or sometimes this will dry out, then the second one will go. So just like when we pruned it and we left two nodes, it gives you two options. In case one dies, the other one goes. Okay, so there's, there's what, uh, what I've done. I got one in, and so now that has the possibility of turning into another plant. So what you wanna look for, here's a, here's a branch that was up under the carport over uh, when I took those cuttings earlier. You don't wanna use something that's completely green. It doesn't have that woody layer. I'm, I'm lo actually looking for something like that. This was actually the only section that was kind of like that. I also have another section that, that is still somewhat green, but it got cold enough, almost like the fall leaves, just to turn it like a maroon color, which is pretty, but you don't want to use that. You want to use the woody branches, and when you cut it, when you make your cut, okay, so I'm going this way, there's my flat cut, I'm going to go down three nodes, take off that tendril, um, I'm going to go down three, and you want to you want to leave about one inch there. You don't want to cut it too long. You want it to be kind of close to that note. So I got three. That's exactly what it should look like. And then the other note that I would give you is when you cut it, you should see green. You should see green in there. That means you still have life. If you cut it and it's completely brown, kind of like this, this uh, moringa tree that I just cut here. See, that's dead in there. If I keep cutting, I'm going to get to where it's green. So that, what they call the cambium layer, is still alive. So you want to make sure it's green. If you're cutting branches and you go to cut into those branches and they're still brown, you're wasting your time. It's a stick. It's dead. It's, it, it died. You have, it has no chance. So like I said, it's important that as soon as you cut it, <gasps> Is going to get a drink. I need some, some life. All right. And then another thing you could do is water it fairly quickly. I just wet the soil right before I put those in, so I know there's a lot of moisture in that soil. And it's very critical, right, when you do that first cut. That one has a whole bunch of nodes, real tight together. I don't like to use them like that. Those ones I don't seem to have as much success with. Those are newer growth. I'm not gonna use those. I'm gonna throw those in the I'm gonna throw those in the pile. Those are gonna turn into something else. Alright, so here we have, here's another branch. So there I can see the nodes are going up there. So I'm going to do my flat cut. One more time I'll show you. Okay, there's my flat cut, there's the top. One, two, three nodes. Then I'm gonna go about an inch away, angle, straight in. And that's what you're gonna do. Now in that pot, I could probably put um, 10, 10 of those in there. It's up to you. I mean, if you're just doing this to get them started, I have a pot here that I did, um, that I did a couple months ago. Now this one, um, I did, let's see, I'm, I'm in a greenhouse, so 
behind me there's two great vines that are in the greenhouse so they are farther along so I have this area and these are farther along because it's warmer in here the frost hasn't hit it the cold hasn't hit these so the, these cuttings were cut back in December and they were placed in this pot and if you look closely you can see they are coming to life these are ones that have been in this pot and there there's actually one two three four five six in here and those will all become new plants so I'll wait till those get good a good uh, maybe six inches there's my six inches again and uh, wait till those are six inches out and then I'll separate those out and do what I want to do with them I may give them away I don't have room to plant them all around here I may sell them it's a good uh, good opportunity for for profit for some extra money so I take those and, and at that point I'll decide what I want to do with them I'll do something with them but what I want to show you guys how to do um, is get those growing so these these are some cuttings here that that are grapevine cuttings and those were placed in the ground at the same exact time as these but when you plant things in plant in, in pots the soil heats up faster so these have a whole lot of contact with the earth you know they they they're at that temperature so that temperature is rising back up as it warms up again it's rising slowly and they'll wake up but these woke up sooner because it's now it's starting to get warm like i said i'm sitting here in in a t-shirt and shorts and it's uh it's time for these plants to start waking up especially the ones in pots and uh, so here's another grapevine here. This one actually is two years old now. And uh, it was in the ground. So like I said, I let it grow up six inches. I put it in this pot to, to root out. And then like I usually do, I, uh, I cut the apple tree. I pruned it. And I threw that in there. And uh, there's probably ten carrots in there because I broadcast uh, a bunch of carrots so that those would just fill in and uh, but this is this is what it will look like after year one is you'll get a little bit of growth and this one was actually in the ground so I dug it out and transplanted into this pot so that now I could give it away or I could do something else with it I could plant it somewhere else but it's contained it's ready to go and ready to be used so there's propagation so um, if you have any questions about that section um, Leave a, leave a question in the comment section down below. Um, let's go ahead and talk about, let's go ahead and talk about what do you do with the rest of this stuff? Of course, like we said before, we're not going to throw it away. So I like to cut it into about one foot sections, you know, something a little more manageable. And the reason for that is it's going to make, it's going to make contact with the ground a little better. And if you're not working a field where you have, you know, thousands or hundreds of grapevines, and this would be kind of cumbersome to come through and try and cut all of these into, uh, you know, if you have thousands and thousands of plants, then you're not going to go and take the time. You're probably just going to drag them out into a pile somewhere, you may even burn them. But that's another tip. Some of you guys that live where there are, uh, grape vines uh, being grown commercially what you can do possibly is contact the farmer that's growing those the the owner and ask them if you can take cuttings because what you're really doing every time you take that cutting you can you can literally fill up as much property as you want to for almost free all you've got to do is go somewhere and propagate those and make plants out of those I mean I'm teaching you something that it seemed like it was hush hush and in, in, uh, you're not gonna walk into Home Depot and they're gonna teach you how to not buy one of their plants you're not gonna walk into any nursery and they're gonna say hey did you know you can propagate that I'm not gonna do that so these are ways that you can grow and multiply plants and use this system for almost free it's just going to take some time and effort but you could make thousands millions of grapevines 
is by doing this and, and other plants and I'll show you other plants but like I said I had a I have an apple tree there that that's just the cutting and that'll root out and that'll become a tree um, we'll go into grafting and and a rootstock and all that in another video but rootstock is not necessary for grapevines um, let's get back to the let's get back to the composting I get carried away sometimes that happens but lucky you you get some additional information find the avenues find the waste streams and use them okay so I got my so here we go we're gonna take these and uh, I'm gonna I have a pile of, of branches over there that's just miscellaneous stuff this area of my yard this is the north side of the wall so probably up to about uh, depending on the time of the year of course three three feet in I'm not gonna ever get Sun there so it's gonna have a hard time growing things in that item so that's kind of a dead zone so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add them there but this is the magic of it check this out come a little closer Let's... okay so this is this is uh, one of the piles that I started recently I had a bunch of leftover uh, grapevine cuttings and apple cuttings here's a big chunk of apple um, here's a little tip for these as well um, grapevines and apple uh, branches are great for rabbits rabbits really love them so there would be part of your other use you can give them to those animals it's great for rabbits teeth because they get to, to gnaw on something hard and um, they love it they enjoy it um, they'll chew all the bark off off of uh, apple branches and uh, there's a little tip another side tip so so these, uh, these branches that we've cut up into about one foot section, we're going to stick on there. That's it. We don't throw them away. Um, now, I will tell you this. The more contact area that these have with the soil, the faster they're going to break down. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to make this go away. This will break down over time. It's out of the way. Like I said, it's kind of in a dead zone. But if I wanted to speed it up, what I could do is I could take, I could take some soil here and I could kind of pile it up where you may wherever you're at in another area you may need to uh, bring in more soil because wherever you're at you don't have a whole lot of soil right there but uh, that that will speed up the process the more contact area you have and a lot of people they'll, they'll stack that but what I found is if it, if it is getting a little moisture in there you're actually creating a little habitat. I like to have a little bit of an area where, where those beneficial insects can grow, where they, the spiders have somewhere to live, and this is a perfect place for them. They can get under there and they can hide and, and they have a little spot. They're not out in the open. So let's look at the magic of this for a second. This is actually um, this is a good demonstration. So here we have regular soil. This is just regular hard dirt so here's a little test look we haven't disturbed this at all we're just going to push this in and that's about how far it goes in I'm trying to keep about the same pressure and then let's look at what we got under there that's just dirt right you don't see any worms not a whole lot of life this is just out in the open soil let's do that again there we go ah, that is fairly soft there the water actually drains down from here and, and keeps this area pretty moist. So it is actually fairly soft. But you're not seeing a whole lot of, of that. There is a little bit of darker dirt there. But my point is that it's it's fairly hard dirt in here. This is not this is not real conditioned soil. Okay, so so there's that. There's exhibit A. Now let's look over here under our wood pile. This is a pile that's been sitting here for about, I would guess, about six or eight months. And then next I'm going to show you the premium pile, where all the good stuff comes from. We call that the worm heaven. So let's look under here. So we're just going to start taking this away. And let's see what we got under here. You see how, how easily that goes into the ground? And I haven't prepped the ground at all. It's never been tilled. It's the regular old dirt. And it's, let's see what we got under there. See how dark that is? If I take a scoop back in here, 
There's tons of roly polies and there's worms wiggling around and there's all kinds of life in there. You can see worms. Can you see those on the camera? Mm -hmm. There's worms in there. There's all kinds of little creatures running for their life. As, so, as though someone's invaded their space. And that's what you want to see in soil. That's what soil should look like. That's what the, the forest floor looks like underneath all that. So look, here's a, here's a one year old uh, apple branch. And this is what happens to it. Look, it just becomes super spongy. Man, he'd love to see that. Don't throw that in the trash. That's just, that's just craziness. Look at this. This is pretty neat. Look, there's a worm that actually, he found the sweet spot. You see him in there? He's eating his way right through a little slice of heaven. <laughs> and I just came and ruined his day. But look, that's super soft stuff right there. And that's breaking down. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And that's going to turn into beautiful soil. So, so don't throw those branches away. That's the main point of that. Take whatever you don't propagate. Take whatever you don't propagate and compost it. Put it back in the ground. Put it somewhere where it can break down. Find your little spot. Now let's go over to the sweet spot. Okay, so now we're back over here. We're only really probably six feet away from that other spot. We're along that that south wall that way is south so this way is north so cast a shadow here i'm not getting a whole lot growing i mean this is about the stop point you can see the cilantro in here now this has been undisturbed for a while of course i'll come in here sometimes especially when i'm setting up a new pot and i really want some some good uh soil in there or i'll take this black gold and i'll i'll put it in choice spots around um and and give the plants some food so check this out this has been undisturbed for a couple months this has got some old hay it's got branches in here that's probably a, a apple it's just got some miscellaneous stuff in here that looks like a dead branch so as i pull this away it's got a lot of rabbit droppings too so that's a, a cycle so look at that Golden magic. Look at that. Look at all those worms in there. That's what you want to see. That's the good stuff. That's what we're going to turn those cuttings into. The ones that we did not propagate. We're going to put those back in there. Look at that beetle. Little friend of the forest there. Little feller. There's all kinds of stuff in there helping the system out. There you go, here's a, look at that, look at that, that is the magic right there. So there you go. How about, can you trap that in there? Alright, so, so that's about it. So, take those cuttings, use those cuttings, propagate them, compost them, use them for something else. Other, be creative. Alright guys. We're out. Hope you learned something. Leave a question, comment. Take care. Oh, I forgot something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Take these videos, share them on Facebook. You see something that you think, hey, you know, my buddy, he would like this. Send him a text message. Click that, that share. It looks like a little box with the, the arrow. Hit that share, send him a text message subscribe i'm going to encourage you guys get on the get on the bandwagon well the bandwagon is just starting out and let's get this channel rolling let's spread these good news and get as many people growing as much stuff as possible help me out here guys i've got my uh my cuttings here did i lose my head sorry there's a bee okay bees happen the friends of the forest don't kill the friends of the forest. Okay.